So in adrenal disorders, you have to remember what's the gland. It is your adrenal gland, right? And so your adrenal gland kind of looks like this. It's on top of the kidneys. It's got two components to it. It's got the, uh, the cortex and it's got uh, the medulla. Right now I'm gonna focus on the cortex. You guys gotta know what these glands do. When you know what they do, the hormones that they secrete and what those hormones do, the disorder becomes a lot easier. So we have three major hormones. You have your mineralocorticoids, and the main one is aldosterone. And you should know that aldosterone reabsorbs salt, sodium at the tubules, so water will also be reabsorbed. Wherever salt goes, water follows, right? The um, second hormone is uh, your glucocorticoid, primarily cortisol, which is a stress hormone. And cortisol, what it does is it, it increases blood sugar levels, okay? Especially during stressful situations. This goes back to our hunter and gather days where if we had to get food, we didn't go to the refrigerator, right? Because there wasn't, there weren't any. We had to go outside and then the heat, so your body gets stressed out. Cortisol increases blood sugar. Aldosterone maintains fluid hydration. That's what it's for. And then we also have androgen sex hormone, but I'm not gonna discuss those so much right now. So there's two different disorders that you have for these adrenal issues, okay? The first one is known as Cushing's disease. Okay. And one of the things that, in my experience, students always have a hard time with is they forget if Cushing's is high or low or, or hypofunction, hyper or hypofunction. It's high, right? So one of the things that I remember is, well, what happens when you smoke some Cush? Yeah. You get yeah. high. So Cushing syndrome is hyperfunction of both of these hormones. So you're gonna have hyperglycemia and you're gonna have fluid retention, including a high sodium level. Now, you're gonna get questions, you're gonna get questions about dietary modifications. If your patient has Cushing's high, Cushing syndrome, what do you do with the potassium in the diet? Well, you have to know that whatever the salt is in this disorder, your potassium will be the opposite. So if sodium is high, potassium will be low. And so you wanna increase the potassium in the diet and you wanna decrease the sodium in the diet. Make sure you guys remember this, guys. If you remember this part and you know that the sodium and the potassium have an inverted relationship when it comes to this disorder, this becomes a lot easier, okay? People with Cushing syndrome, they have what we call truncal obesity, meaning they're, they're, they're gordos right here in the torso area, but their arms are relatively thin. Please remember that particular feature of this condition because it's exclusive to this one. Um, when you're very stressed out, your immune system gets compromised. So these patients will also have uh, depressed immunity. And there's different ways that we can address this issue. You can stop the patient from going to crowded places. You can ensure that they are in a clean environment. You can make sure that they, we assess them frequently for hyperthermia, things like that, right? They're gonna have a depressed immune system. They're, and the skin is part of your immune system, so they're gonna have de decreased skin um, integrity. Oops. They're gonna have a decreased skin integrity. They're gonna be at risk for infections. They're also gonna have, with the elimination of potassium, comes the elimination of calcium. You guys gotta know this. Okay, with the elimination of potassium in this one, you're gonna have the elimination of calcium. So these patients may also develop osteoporosis. You're gonna be at risk for pathological fractures, meaning fractures of the bones without any trauma. This is what's happening with your patient with Cushing syndrome, okay guys? People with Cushing syndrome, you wanna avoid giving them anything that contains sugar, that contains salt, because they're gonna be exacerbating the issue. What we normally do in this condition is we do surgery to remove the actual tumor that's causing the issue. The tumor can be at the adrenal cortex or it could be at the pituitary gland where your adrenal corticotropic hormone is being released. This hormone tells your cortex to either increase or decrease, just like we discussed with the thyroid stimulating hormone and T3 and T4. So what you guys have to know is when this patient has a tumor in the adrenal gland, what's, what tissue is going to be removed? When, they're, uh, when the tumor, guys, is here, where, what, 
Yeah, we remove the adrenal gland. Yeah, we remove the adrenal cortex or the adrenal gland, adrenalectomy. But if the issue is being caused by the pituitary gland, meaning an excessive amount of ACTH, well, then the surgery is going to be a hypophysectomy. And a hypophysectomy is a removal of the pituitary gland. We do it through the nose or through the gum line and um, we put the scope in there and then we obliterate it and then we remove it. There's a lot of things you guys have to know about the hypophysectomy. Let me discuss those real quick. When you have a hypophysectomy, you're essentially, it's brain surgery, right? You're going in there, a very small portion of it, but you're nonetheless, you're going in there. You have to look out for the leakage of cerebrospinal fluid. Okay, so you want to, how do we know it's cerebrospinal fluid? Normally, you'll, there'll be glucose present. Glucose should be 40 to 60 when it comes to the actual CSF. Um, do you guys know the significance of the halos? Whenever your body is leaking cerebrospinal fluid, it usually mixes with blood because of some type of traumatic event that caused the leakage, right? You're gonna have the plasma, the, the blood and the cerebrospinal fluid. It doesn't mix well. And so you'll see a halo. That's why in one of my rap songs, I talk about halos in the bed because if they have a head injury and the fluid is leaking on the bed, you'll see the, you'll see the blood in the center and you'll see like more clear. And there's a definitive line that separates the plasma, the blood from the actual cerebral spinal fluid. Those are known as halos. And they're gonna saturate any part of clot that they touch. You'll notice that the concentric circles like that. Does that make sense? And also you can test it for glucose. When people have a hypophysectomy, if they had it through the gum line, no brushing their teeth for two weeks. And there's other means of maintaining the uh, integrity of the oral hygiene, but no brushing of your teeth because you're gonna dehiss the stitches. Um, you wanna reduce ICP because if you're going in there, you're gonna potentially have ICP, you keep the head bed elevated. Does that make sense? And the same components of any type of cranial or optic surgery. No coughing, no bending over, no straining, the same concepts. Does that make sense? Okay, all right. But if we have an adrenalectomy, if we have an adrenalectomy, does your body have any of those hormones left when we remove the adrenal glands? So we have to consider that we're gonna give them medications, which are usually your steroids, your prednisone, your betamethasone, your salimandrin, your hydrocortisone. All of those steroid drugs are gonna be given to replace the fact that yes, the patient had Cushing syndrome, but we removed the adrenal glands, but now we don't have any hormones, so we must replace them with the medication. Does that make sense, ladies? Yes. One more 